okay so let's start talking about the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia so in the previous video we've seen that the deep fascia lies deep to the platysma and forms a collar around the neck muscle also called as the fascia coli and it gives various extension or lamina which surround the various structures of the neck we saw that it had seven modifications which were the investing layer the pretracheal layer this is the investing layer the pretracheal layer the prevertebral layer the carotid sheath the buccopharyngeal fascia the pharyngobasilar fascia and the temporal fascia so in this video let's talk about the investing layer so this is basically a transfer section of the neck okay if i were to cut the person's head like this and have the anterior end here and the posterior end here this is what i would see so the first thing i would see is that the investing layer is the most superficial layer of the deep cervical fascia and completely encircles the neck okay so it's the most superficial layer completely encircling the neck now if i were to come to its attachments as in the vertical way i would see that it extends superiorly from the external occipital protuberance goes to the superior nuchal line mastoid process of the temporal bone and finally to the base of the mandible so its superior limits are from the external occipital protuberance and then it atta attaches to the superior nuchal line the mastoid process and the base of the mandible now at the base of the mandible it goes upwards and it splits to enclose the parotid gland and the masseter muscle okay so it splits into a superficial lamina and a deep lamina okay and this goes and attaches to the zygomatic process so the superficial lamina is quite thick and dense okay so the superficial lamina named as the parotid mesoteric fascia is quite thick and dense and is attached to the zygomatic arch okay and the deep lamina is thin and is attached to the styloid process the mandible and the tympanic plate now a clinically relevant point associated with the presence of the parotid mesoteric fascia is that because of its thick nature parotid gland swellings because of mumps and parotitis are particularly very painful okay so the clinically relevant point was because of the presence of the thick tough parotid mesoteric fascia which arose from the superficial layer of the investing layer of the deep fascia swellings of the parotid gland are particularly painful now coming to its a uh, deep lamina we see that uh, although it's thin right the deep lamina is thin we see that between the styloid process and the angle of the mandible the deep lamina forms a thickening and this is called the stylomandibular ligament which separates the parotid gland from the submandibular gland now it is also pierced by the external carotid artery okay so we know that as the first of all this is a medial view of the mandible right so we know as the external carotid artery comes upwards around the level of the neck of the mandible it splits into the maxillary artery and the superficial temporal artery right so the external carotid artery is closely related to the stylomandibular ligament so while excising the submandibular gland the external carotid artery should be secured before dividing it otherwise it may retract through the stylomandibular ligament and cause serious bleeding okay so in the superficial lamina we saw swellings of the parotid gland and in the deep lamina we saw the stylomandibular ligament now coming to now proceeding from the superior limit let's go to the inferior attachments right so in the inferior attachments we see the thoracic outlet we see the spine of the scapula the acromion process the manubrium the clavicle and the manubrium right so here we also see that the fascia splits to enclose the suprasternal and the supraclavicular spaces okay okay so the inferior attachment is basically the thoracic outlet extends from the spine of the scapula the acromion process the clavicle and the manubrium 
okay here it bifurcates into two layers which are like slit like intervals called this space of burns which contains certain uh, areolar tissue anterior jugular vein certain lymph glands and all of that okay so the fascia splits to enclose two spaces which are the suprasternal and the supraclavicular space so now we know the inferior attachments also i wouldn't get into too much of the suprasternal and the supraclavicular spaces but uh, i request you to read it as well okay so we have seen the superior attachment and the inferior attachment coming posteriorly we see that it's attached to the ligamentum nuque which extends from the c1 to the c6 vertebrae and the spine of the c7 vertebrae okay so it's completely enclosed the posterior border as well and anteriorly we see that it extends from the symphysis menti to the hyoid bone and both above and below the hyoid bone it is continuous with the fascia of the opposite side so in this manner we see that it completely forms a collar around the neck also it forms pulleys to bind the tendons of the digastric and omohyoid muscles now now that we've seen it vertically let's just go back to the horizontal tracing okay this is the transverse section and here we would see that behind where it starts from the ligamentum nuque as it goes forward it splits to enclose the first muscle which is trapezius okay and as it goes forwards it forms the roof of the posterior triangle now at the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid it again splits to enclose the sternocleidomastoid and moving forward it comes to the center of the neck and merges with the fascia of the opposite side so in this way it has formed a collar now you would also see that it gives out certain extensions right the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid the superficial layer is also related to the pretracheal layer the carotid sheath and also the prevertebral fascia so let's study all of these in the next video okay so i hope you have understood this video let's just quickly summarize the investing layer completely encircles the neck and forms a superficial layer its superior attachments were this its inferior attachments we have seen as well posteriorly we have seen it extends from the ligamentum nuque to c7 and anteriorly we have seen from the hyoid it completely forms a fascia uh, one very important thing we saw was the parotidomesoteric fascia and the stylomandibular ligament so i'll see you in the next video and we'll continue talking about the pretracheal layer and the prevertebral layer and the carotid sheath thank you